Hello everyone! In today's lesson, we will be studying the different sources of evidence for evolution such as fossil records, comparative anatomy, and genetic information which gave way to the different concepts about the origin of life. Our learning competency explain how fossil records, comparative anatomy, and genetic information provide evidence for evolution. We have three specific objectives. Enumerate the lines of evidence that support the occurrence of evolution. Explain the relevance of fossil records, comparative anatomy, and genetic information as evidence of evolution. And you are going to create a concept map that shows the sources of evidence for evolution and give example for its evidence. In the following statements, you will determine whether the statements are true or false. For number one, fossils provide direct evidence that organisms are continually evolving. So this statement is true. Number two, remains of plants and animals found in sedimentary rock deposits give us an indisputable record of the past. Also, this is a true statement. Now, how about for number three? Analogous structures are similar structures that evolve from common ancestor but functions differently. This is a false statement. Number four, when organisms reproduce, they pass on their genetic material to their offspring. This is true. And for number five, bird wings and butterfly wings are examples of homologous structures. This is false. Now, there are three pictures displayed on the screen. You will determine which of these evidence for comparative anatomy, for fossil records or genetic information. The first picture is a genetic information. This shows the sequence of amino acids. For the second, it is comparative anatomy. Then for the third one, it shows fossil records. Now displayed on the screen is, we call this the geologic time scale. Complete the statement below explaining how organisms have changed over time based on the geologic time scale. Using the fossil records of these organisms, explain how scientists were able to conclude that evolution happens. So the answer is, life on Earth gradually evolved from a very simple to complex organisms, from invertebrate to vertebrate, or from unicellular to multicellular. Fossil records or fossils provide solid evidence that organisms in the past are not the same as the organisms today. So based from fossil records, paleontologists are able to conclude that there is really evolution since through time, organisms have developed from a very simple to a complex organisms. Now what is this geologic time scale? It is the calendar for major events in Earth history. It also shows the appearance of various kinds of organisms in a particular period of time on Earth. By studying and examining the physical rock layers and dating of fossilized remains and imprints, scientists were able to develop the geologic time scale. Now you have four pictures displayed on the screen. You will determine whether these structures are representation of analogous and homologous structures. So, the first example or the first picture shows homologous structure. Now, why is this homologous structure? You observe that their four limbs, the arrangement of the bony structures are almost similar. So, it is homologous. Then, the second example is this shows analogous structure. Now, why analogous? The structure of the bone are not actually similar. However, the function of the two, the bat wing and the bird's wing, are used for flying. So they are analogous structure. 
Um, number three is homologous. Same reason for number one. They have similar bony structures, but they are used in different function. And for number four, this is analogous structure. Different bone structure, but they function the same. They are used for flying. Next one is, uh, you have five statements. You will analyze its statement and determine whether they are examples of homologous, analogous, or vestigial structures. Vestigial structure means, in the ancient past, they have function, but through time or say today, they are not animal useful. Um, for number one, rabbits and birds have the same bones in the same order in their forelimbs, even though they use them for different purposes. So this one is an example of homologous structure. Bat wings and bird wings have different bony structures, though they have similar functions. Um, number two is an example of analogous structure. Uh, for number three, organism evolved over time so that some body parts were no longer works or function. So this is an example of a vestigial structure. Number four, a group of mice become separated by a formation of a river. Over time, the northern mice became smaller and whiter while the southern mice became larger and browner. So this is an example of homologous structure. They come from same ancestor. However, they adapt to the, to the environment, so they change. Number five, a fossil of an extinct dinosaur was found and the anatomy of the fossil shows similarities to that of a bird. This is an example of homologous structure since they have the same anatomy. The second evidence of evolution is comparative anatomy. It is the study of the similarities and differences in the structures of different species. Body structures can be homologous or analogous. And this to provide evidence for evolution. Studying anatomy allows scientists to identify homologous structures across diverse groups of related organisms such as the the leg bone or the forelimbs. Homologous structures or divergent evolution are structures that are similar and come from a common ancestor but they function differently. The figure shows the hands of several different mammals. As you can observe in their bony structures, they have similar or same pattern of bones. However, the function of these are different. Now how about uh, analogous structure? Or convergent evolution. So this is the opposite of the, the homologous. In analogous structures, these are the structures that come from different or unrelated ancestor but they have similar functions. Now how about the vestigial organs? Vestigial structures are examples of homologous structures that has apparently been reduced through evolution to non-functional state because its function is no longer utilized by the organism. So that is why the organ is lost or reduced. Okay, so moving on. We are given here the hemoglobin sequences of amino acids in the different species, say the humans, um, chimpanzee, the gorilla, the rhesus monkey, horse, and the kangaroo. So what you are going to do here is to determine the number of amino acid that is different from us. For human and chimpanzee, we don't have any differences. For human and gorilla, the number of the amino acid differences um, one. It is number one hundred four lysine. Then for human and rhesus monkey, we have two glutamine and lysine. 87 and 104 then for human and horse we have five they are number 87 which is alanine number 111 also alanine then 112 leucine 114 valine and 116 then for human and kangaroo we have seven they are 
amino acid number 87, 104, 109, 110, 112, 113, and 116. Then after that, you will construct a bar graph or histogram that shows the number of amino acid differences between humans and the different kinds of animals. And you will answer the question, based on the hemoglobin similarity, which organism appears to be most closely related to humans? It is chimpanzee. Uh, based from the amino acid, differences in amino acid, it seems that we have no difference in the amino acid. It is zero. Then the second question, based on the hemoglobin similarity, which organism appears to be least related to humans? So it is kangaroo because the number of amino acid that is different from us is seven. So kangaroo is the least related to us. Genetic information is another evidence of evolution. Um, DNA provides clues into how evolution may have happened. Gene duplication allows one copy to undergo mutational events without harming an organism, as one copy continues to produce functional protein. Mutations in DNA happen spontaneously and are already present in individuals of a population when selective pressure occurs. Once the environment begins to favor a particular trait, then those individuals already carrying that mutation or that characteristic will have a selective advantage and most likely to survive and produce offspring. Scientists believe that the greater the similarity between the two organisms' DNA and amino acid sequences, the closer their relationship, meaning the more they are related to each other. And the greater the differences in amino acid sequences, the more the distant their relationship is. So in the last part of the activity sheet, you will create a concept map summarizing the evidence of evolution and you are going to give us one example for its evidence. The grade for the concept map will be based on the scoring rubrics in your learning activity sheets.